You cannot deny that his work with the turtles had something to do with it. It was pretty unbelievable to everyone in the courtroom that they could just misplace like a huge chunk of evidence like that. Because it's a business. We are talking about money. Okay, be careful. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Since 2002, over a thousand conservationists and activists have been killed while protecting environmental and land rights. Central and South America have emerged as the most dangerous regions in the world for conservationists. But in a more disturbing pattern, the perpetrators of these crimes have gone largely unpunished. As of last year, only six killings of environmentalists ended up in convictions. The murder of Jairo Moro Sandoval, a local conservationist in Costa Rica, is not one of those six. In 2013, Jairo was killed on Moyne Beach, a popular nesting site for leatherback turtles on the Caribbean coast. Jairo Mora fue hallado sin vida el 30 de mayo del 2013 en una playa de Moín en Limón. Él fue arrastrado varios metros en la playa y esto habría ocasionado que se asfixiara con la arena. Jairo was killed while on patrol for sea turtle eggs with four female volunteers. Three were students from the United States. After rescuing a nest of turtle eggs, their car was sabotaged, and the conservationists were captured by a gang of young men. The girls were assaulted and tied up in a wooden hut in the jungle, while Jairo was taken separately. The volunteers managed to escape the hut, but Jairo's body was found the next morning, having been brutally murdered and dragged behind a car. His violent murder shocked the nation. It sparked protests locally and abroad, and was a wake-up call for many who viewed Costa Rica as an eco-friendly tourist destination in Central America amongst neighboring countries with sky-high murder rates and notorious gang and drug problems. Jairo's former mentor, Didier Chacon, is the director of the conservation group Latin American Sea Turtles. Who was Jairo and what was your relationship with him? <clears throat> he was trained with our group and he was helping to turn Moin from a poached beach to a good beach for conservation. Moin is an exception, it's not the rule in the country. And we are working to change that exception to be like, like another beaches in the country, safe for volunteers and tourism. How has the relationship between poachers and conservationists changed in the last few years? When you work in a community, you know everyone. But now we have poachers from places away because it's a business. Historically a cultural pastime, the harvesting and sale of endangered turtle products has grown into organized criminal operations in some areas. It's not a problem when you are a, a local family in Isola Beach and you take some eggs daily, right? The thing is when you are link, you link the activity with the markets because people collect too much because that means market will return an income in cash. One of the nests in, in the black market now, one nest is a hundred dollar. It's one a hundred dollar in one night. And for some people, this is all all income in one month. We are talking about money. Didier brings us to Moyne Beach, where Jairo was in direct competition with poachers and ultimately killed on patrol. Jairo's body was found right, right over here. Well, in a place like this here, because the ocean and two years ago was over there. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just at this location. In this location, yes. So you can see right here in Moyne, um, this is a leatherback turtle that came up uh, laid its nest right over here and then went back down. But you can see right here this ATV track. Uh, this was poached as almost all nests on this beach are. Um, and, you know, the poachers are using ATVs. They're running around very quickly. And uh, this one clearly was taken. All of this number was, uh, were painted by Jairo, by hand. He painted all these numbers. Every 100 meters. So we could keep track. It's to, to cross the number of nests and location. So he was just supremely dedicated. Like, this was his life, mm -hmm. was saving these sea turtles. Exactly. Lindsay Fenn is a journalist with the Tico Times who extensively covered Jairo's death and the subsequent murder trial. What was the impression you got um, of Jairo and the work that he was doing? It's complicated because a lot of people have painted different pictures of Jairo. In the trial, the prosecution made him out to be this hero crusading for protecting the turtles of Moeen. 
But at the same time, he was also an outsider in that regard. He's from the Caribbean, but that's how he was viewed by a lot of these poachers, as sort of this outsider coming in and telling them how they had to live their lives. He was a bit aggressive, though, in his methods. Well, he was proactive. Yeah. If I can say Proactive, that. yeah. Yes, proactive, yeah. yes. Those who spent time on Moline Beach, they really think that that was a big factor in why he ended up being murdered. Whether or not Hyro's death was related to his work with turtle conservation is still debated. Many media uh, makes a relationship between uh, the crime was an, uh, an, an act against turtle people, and that is not true. You don't think Hyro's death, his murder, had to do with turtle poaching? I don't think. That gang, their business was assault, was crime. You cannot deny that his work with the turtles had something to do with it, because that's the reason he was out on the beach, and all of the investigation documents indicate that these men were poachers and that they were in competition with Hyro for eggs. The owner of the car that dragged Jairo to death was Felipe Ares, a Nicaraguan immigrant who allegedly helped escalate turtle egg poaching from a small side business to a criminal enterprise. His prior arrests include kidnapping and drug trafficking. Testimony from the kidnapped women who were with Jairo the night of his murder say they overheard the gang mention a drug boat and say they had to get to the beach. Some of these uh, night walkers, you know, looking for eggs for trade, are people in drugs. There's so much crime on Moine, it's incredibly dangerous. Costa Rica has become a major transshipment point for drug trafficking, which brings with it an array of gangs and guns. The violence that pervades the drug trade has recently spilled onto the shores of Costa Rica. Drug addicts have also made Moine their stomping grounds, making the beach one of the most dangerous places in the country. Okay, be careful. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Do we know who these people are? Yeah. Well, do you remember I said uh, the ATVs poach eggs? Yeah. Okay. So these right here, these people coming Pop up? It, possible, yeah. Uh -huh. Sometimes you, bring, you, you see people, they, they come to practice with guns. I know. So you've got to be careful when you're on this beach when people roll up. Mm -hmm. So this right here. This was the, the, the place that the, the gang take the girls and put it inside. How many, there were four girls with Hyro when he was caught. Yes. Yes. And they weren't Costa Ricans, right? They were... They are volunteers from the rescue center. Mm -hmm. And they basically tied them up and locked them in over here? Uh, they take and put it there. And uh, we think they have plans to, to hearse them. Mm -hmm. But the, the plans change. And um, the next week after the case, the police burned the house by mistake. They burned the house? By mistake. With all the evidence of what was happening? By mistake. By mistake? Yes. Really? Yes. That's what they say? Yes. OK. It's a pretty big mistake. Yeah. The trial was marred by significant missteps, with some alleging corruption played a role. Were there a lot of mistakes made in the initial investigation? A lot of people viewed it as a pretty big miscarriage of justice. El manejo de las evidencias en esta causa, lamentable, irresponsable. When that kind of stuff happens, especially in such a high profile case, the first thing you do as a reporter is think, okay, who's behind this? But really, I mean, we all looked into it. If there was any kind of corruption in the case, and it, it doesn't seem like it, it seems like it was honestly just incompetence. Hubo errores que son garrafales, que dice uno que uno no podría esperar que un funcionario lo IJ se le olvide firmar un cuadrito que es una cadena de custodia donde yo le entrego el documento a... Do you think corruption played a role? Do you think drug trafficking played a role? Well, I don't want to believe that. Yeah. I don't want to, to say, um, the black hand is in, inside of our co court. Uh, but I can't believe the kind of mistakes that they do. The police recovered the phones of the alleged suspects, which had text messages linking them to the murder. But due to a filing error, this evidence was not permitted for use in the trial. 
El asesinato de Jairo Mora sigue impune pese a que ya se realizó un juicio. Los sospechosos podrían ser incriminados. Sin embargo, fueron absueltos porque la fiscalía perdió la prueba de unas conversaciones telefónicas grabadas. They just lost a disc of a lot of the recordings. It was pretty unbelievable to everyone in the courtroom that they could just misplace like a huge chunk of evidence like that. Los costarricenses y muchos en el mundo entero esperaban una condena por este crimen atroz. It was just a trial that was ruled by incompetence, that it was just mistake after mistake, and it just never stopped until the very end. Y en Costa Rica la muerte de un defensor de tortugas se llena de misterio, mientras que los principales sospechosos quedan impunes por errores que comete la fiscalía en el proceso de acusación. The suspects of Jairo's murder were acquitted of all charges. Two years after his death, the crime remains unsolved. As of June 2015, the court decision is currently being appealed. Police in the area continue to patrol Moyne Beach to the best of their ability. But as long as the Caribbean coast continues to be a magnet for drug-related crime, their focus is on a different sort of illegal trade. Muchos grupos de narcotraficantes están tratando de tomar el control en Costa Rica. People like him, you know, who works for the country, who protects the nature here, are, you know, falling because of those criminals. Ahora los, los cazadores andan con armas AK-47, 9 milímetros, los cazadores furtivos nos tiran a nosotros, y nosotros con esto... It's like old cowboy weapons. 